the fire within podcast you need a sustainable plan the right mindset and the knowledge and inspiration to stoke the fire within just like the phoenix you can burn your old habits never turn back and emerge completely anew there are no shortcuts welcome fire within nation this is the fire within podcast where we dive into all things nutrition fitness and health related i'm your host brandon woolley joined by my co-host and producer joel woolworth hello welcome joe so for today's episode, we're going to break down a proper detox. I'm finishing up a two-week one myself, and just to have a few days left, God, I miss coffee. <laughs> oh. But a bunch of my clients have been asking for more information on doing a detox, so here it is. Bam! First of all, I'm pretty ignorant. Like, I don't know if I've ever done a detox. I've done some stuff that might feel like a detox, but not to what the level that we're going to talk about today. But the first thing I always think about is that episode from The Office with Kelly. You're shaking. Are you all right? Just leave me alone! I am on the third day of my cleanse diet. All I have to do is drink maple syrup, lemon juice, cayenne pepper, and water for all three meals. Um, I just bought some bikinis online, size two, so... I look amazing! <laughs> and I always think about how, uh... Like, that's probably most people's motivations, right? It's like a crash diet. It's like, if I don't eat for two weeks, I can fit into the thing I just bought. That's not really the reason... You do a detox, though. No, not not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I think there's a lot of crappy ones out there. Yeah. Like, just utter nonsense. The lemon and cayenne pepper doesn't work? <laughs> You'll lose weight, but it's not, it's not healthy. <laughs> Fasting has its benefits, I think. But if you're trying to find something to actually reset your body... Mm -hmm. um, really, the main organ we're, we're trying to fix is the liver. That's our primary organ of detoxification. And it's what changes the structures of toxins so that we can eliminate them through sweat, urine, and bowel movements. Basically, by just being a regular human being, you can kind of gunk up your liver, in a sense. And you need a bit of reset? Is that what you're saying? Well, on the American diet, yeah. On the American diet, yeah. Now, now, you can eat the way you're supposed to, and, and maybe it's not as necessary. Yeah. But isn't that what your liver's supposed to do, Brandon? Doesn't it detox your body? <laughs> it does. <laughs> but sometimes it's good to give our body a reset and give yeah. it a little bit of help. I like, because you, you shared with me a little bit about this. And I think what's important to note, because I'm skeptical of almost everything, because I've tried crash diets and stuff. The only reason that I think that this, what we're going to talk about today is, is a really cool idea is because what you said, it's the American diet. It's because of the changes that have happened in the last couple of decades to the way that we all eat. And now we've got these new issues that we didn't have before leading to all these health issues. Yeah. And, and not just for the liver itself, but also our habits, you know, because what happens is we, so a lot of people get on a health kick, right? Right. And they're solid for maybe even a couple months. And then mm -hmm. they go, oh, I'll have ice cream this time. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll have one drink at this party. And I'm talking about myself now. And then, you know, weekly card night. Now, maybe I'll have two drinks. And then it slipped into like five drinks. And I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. So even somebody who's super diligent about nutrition and health, we start adding and allowing more and more cheats. Yeah. Uh, so it could be a li it could be a liver reset. It could be a mindset reset. Mm -hmm. I was reading a book that you suggested. It was Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Yeah. Is that the guy's name? And uh, he said every once in a while he'll do a detox just to prove that he is in control of his habits. So he's like, I'll stop drinking for a while. I'll stop doing coffee for a while. And it's more just to test that I'm still in control. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> like if I can stop drinking for a couple of weeks, I might not have a big problem. <laughs> but if, if, I, <laughs> if I have a real problem with it, there's probably something deeper there. Yeah. Uh, so maybe first we'll discuss a couple of the not so great uh, detox approaches out there. Okay. Uh, so we mentioned the lemon water, cayenne pepper, maple syrup one. She um, also later swallowed a tapeworm that <laughs> Creed sold her. <laughs> So I assume right. you don't like that one either, Brandon. <laughs> no, that's, it's not at the top of my list. So, so, you know, hopefully if you're considering doing a detox, it's it's not just a lose weight quick scheme, but you're trying to uh, have some sustainable health habits or maybe you're trying to have an increase in your microbiome health even because mm -hmm. that resets not just your liver, but it can also help your small intestines heal and repair because you're cutting out all the different types of food that are going to penetrate that barrier and cause damage. Yeah, so microbiome health is your intestinal health. And we talked about this on the episode with Dr. Lavelle. Episode five, uh, Epi four. Episode four, yeah. And I learned a lot about that. And what, what really stuck out to me, and this is what I didn't know, I knew that it was important, like healthy, you know, we all saw the commercials with the lady who was in True Lies with that Activia commercials, you know, <laughs> those ones. Yeah. And we're like, yep, we got bacteria down there. Good bacteria. That's great. <laughs> 
Um, and that was about the extent of my knowledge. But I didn't realize that like what you were talking about before, the current American diet, the the wheat and the corn and those things can make it through and penetrate the lining of our intestines in a way that they're just kind of floating out there in our bloodstream. Absolutely. Triggering inflammation, autoimmune responses and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And then so like resetting it, does that help? Does that, so what you're talking about here doing a detox gives the body time for that to heal? Right. And, and it's almost an elimination diet where mm-hmm. we're going to take out the most common irritants in the, in the American diet mm-hmm. and for a two week period to allow it to, to kind of heal itself. Yeah. And then you could slowly reintroduce some of these things, hopefully not at the same frequency, and sustain some better health here. Right. All right. So what are some of the other loser ways of doing it? <laughs> the Kelly Kapoor approved. <laughs> the Kelly Kapoor. You know, if it's a bar only or a shake only approach that isn't emphasizing whole foods in addition, it's not my favorite way to go. And if you're talking about two weeks, I don't think that's a sustainable way to go. And most of these shakes and bars have corn syrup solids in them and all kinds of nonsense. Um, and they're definitely not nutritionally complete. Yeah, so sustainability is a big problem there. Like, it's really not realistic to be like, I'm going to drink this for two weeks, and that's all I'm going to do. Which people do it, and yeah. y- yes, you can, but is it healthy? Probably not. And what's going to happen to your body at the end of that period when mm-hmm. you go back? Whereas a proper detox, we're trying. You could actually eat the detox way your whole life. It is sustainable, and you can learn things about your body through the elimination portion and the reintroduction yeah. portion. So in addition to the two weeks of not eating these items, there should be one week of down ramping to get your body ready. For instance, you know, if you cut caffeine, all of a sudden you're going to have massive migraines. Yeah, which I totally did. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because caffeine, you know, it restricts blood flow in the blood vessels. And as soon as you um, get rid of it and they dilate again, you get that rush of blood. And that's why people have such a hard time coming off of caffeine. So so it should be gradual. The most common approach would be to start with, you know, three quarters caffeinated coffee and one quarter decaf. And then you go half and half. Then you go... Uh, and you slowly wean off of it until you're doing decaf yeah. entirely. Uh, same with sugar. You want to start uh, slowly reducing anything with ad- added sugar as that week comes on. Because sugar is the most addictive substance on the planet, even more than crack cocaine, if you could believe that. There's a study referenced in a book called Genius Foods by Dr. Paul Gruel and, and Max Lugavier. And when rats are given the choice between table sugar and cocaine, they're going to choose table sugar 10 out of 10 times. And rats really like cocaine. <laughs> that is crazy. So, so and the food industry is aware it's the most addictive substance on the planet. That's why it's in everything because it pushes product. Now, I've, I've talked uh, extensively in episode three about wheat grain and corn and how that could cause issues in the gut. So those are some of the other uh, items we want to wean off of. Dairy is one. You know, I'm, I'm not sure there's a necessity at all for dairy in the diet. Now, fermented dairy like Greek yogurt and kefir are normally okay for the majority of the population. But for the purpose of a detox, we're going to cut all forms of dairy, including goat cheese. So that's another one. There's a couple other items. Soy. Soy is one of the most sprayed crops, and it also has xeno and phytoestrogens, which can cause some hormonal imbalances. So we're going to cut soy. By the way, coconut aminos is a great replacement for soy sauce, which is detox approved. Artificial sweeteners for sure, like sucralose, we're going to cut out. And now the ones that are okay are going to be erythritol, stevia, monk fruit, and blackstrap molasses. So those are the okay sweeteners, but no honey, no maple syrup, no sugar. And then we're also going to cut out peanuts and peanut butter which are actually a bean, have a high amount of that lectin protein and have molds and bacteria that grow. Just peanuts, not other nuts and legumes? Right, just peanuts. I I would limit cashews as well, but most other nuts are fine. So that's your basic list. We got dairy, wheat, grain, corn, peanuts, caffeine, alcohol, added sugar. One other thing I didn't mention is eggs. Many people start to experience an inflammation response to eggs because it's so prevalent. And typically, there's nothing wrong with eggs. But uh, it's a good idea to give your bra- a body a break from it. Mm. Yeah, so so that's what we're going to cut. So um, that's the naughty list. Yep. Yeah. Now... Well, what the heck is left, Brandon? 
<laughs> Absolutely nothing in a bowl of ice. <laughs> so things that are allowed, any kind of properly sourced protein, um, which is going to include organic pasture-raised chicken, organic pasture-raised turkey, uh, grass-fed beef. Now, things like bison and elk and lamb, you don't have to worry as much about. They're a little bit less industrialized. So I don't always freak out if I don't see an organic label on them. Mm. And I did find out something interesting about the organic reading, at least as far as vegetables are concerned. I don't know if it's similar for meats, but in order to be uh, considered an organic farmer, you have to have a field that hasn't been used for seven years with any kind of pesticide or spray. Really? And that's why so many farmers can't do it. They can't go without an income for seven years. Hmm. It would be like they would have to farm as organic farmers, but they couldn't say that they were doing it that way. Till the seventh year. Huh. Yeah, and there's all kinds of regulations. So they would have to basically leave a, a plot uh, dormant for seven years and not make wow. any money off of it. Oh, so it would have to lay fallow for seven years. You couldn't just farm organically from it. You just couldn't farm it for seven years. I believe that's the case. Wow. Uh, maybe we get some clarification on that. But um, I went to the farmer's market and I asked, hey, is this pepper organic? And she snapped at me. She was like, you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. <laughs> you shut your dirty mouth. And she explained this process and she was so angry. And I understand her anger and frustration. Yeah, but, that seems a little unfair. Yeah, but it's a, it's a poor way to get business. <laughs> I felt a little attacked. So uh, that's enough of that rabbit hole. So properly sourced proteins. Yep. You know, vegetables and fruits, as long as it's not corn. You don't have to always get organic for all fruits and vegetables, but I would yeah. be very careful with strawberries. They're super, super absorbent like sponges. And I, I think berries especially should be organic. So what's the, just remind me and the listeners, what's the big deal about avoiding corn? So corn. When it comes uh, to detoxing specifically. Well, corn has tons of that lectin protein, and what that lectin protein does is it pretends to be insulin. It tries to regulate blood sugar in and out of a cell like insulin, only it'll allow it to overfill and spill out into the bloodstream, and that has to be stored as fat in the liver or as adipose tissue. Mm. Um, so corn is one of the worst items for that, especially corn derivatives like corn syrup. So if you did the whole fast and you're like, I don't buy it, I'm going to eat corn anyways, you might be just wasting your time. <laughs> I don't think you're doing yourself any favors. So um, you mentioned to me yesterday, because we were talking about this a little bit before we worked out, that grapefruit is, is another fruit that you should avoid during the cleanse. Now, this has to do with some kind of enzyme thing going on that I don't know all the specs on. but, but I think most people, if you're like, you can't have grapefruit, they're like, <laughs> fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people like it with breakfast or, or things like that. And there's nothing inherently wrong with a grapefruit, but specific for trying to get the liver to reset, especially if you are using some supplementation, like with milk thistle and B vitamins and you know, phytochemicals from broccoli and garlic and things like that, then um, that grapefruit enzyme is going to interact poorly with that and you won't get the best effect. Mm. And you'll see it on a lot of prescription medications too for the same reason we'll say, you know, don't eat grapefruit yeah. while taking this medication. And by I the think, way... I think I can go two weeks without eating grapefruit. I think <laughs> I've gone a couple of years right now and I'm not even trying, man. <laughs> <laughs> Iron will. Um now, well, I'll keep going through the list, and then we'll talk about some proper detoxes. But uh, So there's going to be no shellfish of any kind. That's tough. And that's for all kinds of different reasons, mercury, contaminated waters. We would never do farmed fish anyway or, or seafood. But now wild-caught fish is okay, but no shrimp, no scallops, no mussels, nothing like that. Because they're kind of the livers of the sea anyway. They're, <laughs> they're detoxing all the crud and stuff. Um, that makes sense, yeah. Uh, and then fats, we're going to go with raw nuts and seeds. You want to do avocado oil. You want to do coconut oil. You can do ghee, which is a clarified butter. I know it's a dairy component, but most I think almost all of the dairy proteins are, are, are eliminated from that through, through the process of making ghee. So ghee is actually allowed on a detox, unless you have a dairy issue. Yeah. Your carbs, we're going to stick to... And olive oil too, right? Yep, olive oil. All the olive oil. For your carbs, you know... Beans, peas, lentils, uh, potatoes are going to be pretty much it, and fruits and vegetables, of course. You know, I wouldn't do any kind of grains like wheat grain, corn, not even ancient grains like quinoa. Uh, although some detoxes do allow those items, but I think for best results, because of that lectin protein and the effect on the liver, I would probably leave them out. And then you want to go nuts with the spices and flavors so your food is still interesting. 
you know, I want to be very clear. You should enjoy the food you eat on a detox. It should be delicious. It should be whole foods. It should fill you up. You're not supposed to be starving. So it's not like you're trying to cut back on portions or anything like that. Unless you, you know, historically overeat. Um, yeah. But we should be eating pretty much regular portions. We're just trying to cut out all the things with hormonal disruption. Are there any seasonings? Because it seems like all of them are pretty good for you. They're just like ground up plants. Is there any that you should avoid for? Not really. What you do want to do is check the label of your seasonings. My girlfriend called me out. I picked up some chili powder. I think it was the, well, I don't want to name brands, but uh, I looked on the back and it was mixed with canola oil and I'm like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I threw it out, bought another thing of chili powder. Huh. So you'd be surprised how many seasonings have sugar added and have canola oil added. It's absurd. Mm. Um, so just always check the back. But yeah, I want to go nuts. Salt, pepper, you want to do herbs, basil, do, you know, you could do Asian sauces with that coconut yeah. amino and cayenne and ginger. What um, about sushi? Like, I love sushi. Is that an okay thing? So you could make a detox friendly sushi if you use rice cauliflower. I can't promise it's going to taste the same. <laughs> uh, you can use that as your sticky rice with the seaweed wrap. And I guess if you had some sashimi grade you know, wild caught salmon, you could probably make your own sushi. Hmm. Just remember there's no dairy. We're not going to tempura fry anything, things like that. No soy sauce. Nope. You're going to use coconut aminos instead, which tastes better in my opinion, but that's your soy replacement. It's, it's fantastic. And it has a sweetness to it. Hmm. So it's almost like an eel sauce. So those of you sushi lovers out there, if you like eel sauce, you're going to love coconut aminos. Really? See, I think sushi has been primarily in my eating of it, a delivery system for the wasabi sauce. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an excuse to eat wasabi. Yeah, I can see that. I do love wasabi. <laughs> and I like to eat the ginger. Now, pickled ginger is freaking fantastic for you. Yeah. For digestion, for anti-inflammation. So I love pickled ginger. You can have that on the detox. And then for your beverages, it's um, pretty much going to be water, green tea, no highly caffeinated tea. So we're going to stick around 15 milligrams of caffeine, which is your green tea, some white teas, herbal teas. But we don't want to do black tea because it's 65 milligrams, which is half of what coffee is. Yeah. And then... You well, know, that's not crazy restrictive. I mean, it's it's cutting out a good amount of stuff, but... Yeah, I mean, there's actually... still have a, some good meals. Yeah, there's actually a lot more you can eat than, than you can't. Now, if somebody wants to buy a product where everything is packaged with recipes, with all the supplements included, if you want a supplement component, you know, I would, I would still recommend the Lifetime Fitness one. I think, I think that company's doing it right. That's an incredible one. That's typically the one I'll use. This go around, I'm actually doing it sans supplements, just, just to save some money this, this go around, but I'm sticking with all the approved foods and, and I'll still get a pretty good effect from it. So talk to me about what the effect. And so you said you do this a couple times a year or you strive to do it a couple times a year? Yeah, at least twice. What are the effects or the benefits that you feel that you receive from doing this detox? Let's start with the positives. Mm -hmm. the skin typically clears up immediately because I'm not doing my cheats. I'm not having a piece of bread at a restaurant and things like that. So you actually get these spots that form on your fingers and toes. Uh, it's called dermatitis herpetiformis, and it just looks like these tiny bubbles. And that is usually the result of gluten, wheat, grain, corn, and those items. When those proteins start penetrating through the gut, we start to get those bubbles show up on our skin. So we typically see skin clear up. Most everybody I've ever worked with on the detox around midweek, Two, they have just unbelievable mental clarity and sharpness. They can think better because they're, you know, their bodies are on these up and down roller coaster of blood sugar spikes and crashes and things like that. Finally, everything normalizes and you just have this focus that's not caffeine driven. That's another benefit. Typically, you may lose five to seven pounds. That's not unheard of for the two week process. Puffiness goes away, especially in the face. That's the first place my, my clients typically notice their, mm -hmm. their face shrinks. Uh, so instead of three chins, now you have two chins, which is awesome. <laughs> That's um, the first thing people always like, oh, you're losing weight when your face gets skinnier. Yeah. I think your bowel intestinal health can, can improve. Bowel movements can improve. Uh, less upset stomach, less heartburn. Some of those things can start to go down. Now, I don't expect it to heal SIBO in two weeks, but certainly it's a nice reset. And if you ate that way continuously, you know, I think after three to six months, those with chronic stomach issues could start to see some resolution of that, unless there's something more serious going on. But, mm. but uh, you know, like Crohn's disease, not going to heal Crohn's disease, but, but it can make a big difference. Yeah. So I got a question for you. 
What are some of your favorite meals to prepare when you're on this detox? Because you said you, you shouldn't, you still should enjoy your food. Yeah. What are some of the things that you're like, oh man, this is a great meal yeah. for on detox? I love to combine coconut oil and buffalo sauce, or rather, I like Frank's Red Hot Sauce. Okay. Chris, Crystals is another good brand. So you're kind of making your own buffalo sauce, because buffalo sauce is right. It's like Tabasco and butter, right? That's what's Typically, in, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, and I have to give credit where credit dues is due. I got that idea from the detox recipe guide from Lifetime, Mm -hmm. but I started doing variations and doing my own thing with it. Um, And now my favorite is like, I like to cook it down with, with minced garlic and that's a sauce. I'll pour that on the sweet potato. I'll pour it on the chicken. And then, so you got Frank's red hot, which is approved. Then you said coconut oil. Yep. Coconut oil, coconut oil, and then minced minced garlic. garlic, And you just let it simmer a bit. Call it detox buffalo, the detoxed buffalo sauce. Yeah, I mean, uh, (laughs) it's great on wings. You can use olive oil instead. Uh, If you're not going to cook the oil, like most people do their sauce for their wings after it's cooked. So if you're not going to cook the olive oil at a high temperature, you can use that when the chicken's done. If you like that, if you don't like the coconut flavor, I really like the coconut flavor. But So you mix your wings in with olive oil, coconut oil. If you want to add the minced garlic, you can. If you want to make an Asian zing flavor, you can use the coconut aminos, olive oil, and minced garlic, and mm-hmm. ginger. Oh, my gosh. that That's awesome. Uh, and that'll give you a nice Asian sauce that's approved. You could probably put a touch of, of blackstrap molasses in that for to thicken it up. Yeah. Uh, so there's options out there. But but that's one of my favorites. So I'll put that on chicken. I'll put it on, you know, grass-fed beef. I like to get the Siete cassava flour tortillas. And I'll do buffalo or, or bison. Uh, I'll cook that up with avocado, salsa, and, and I'll just make these amazing detox-approved tacos. I usually make my own seasoning because most of the seasoning packets have canola oil and things like that in it. And you mentioned those guys before, Siete. They also make tortilla chips. Yeah, they make tortilla chips, hard shell. They're starting to make bean dips now. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out the Siete brand, they're like a miracle um, for this day and age. They they came out with a wheat, grain, corn, soy, dairy, vegetable oil free tortilla and tortilla chip and um, as long as you toast them in a pan with a touch of olive oil and some sea salt they're just unbelievable at first i was eating them raw and i'm like these suck and then somebody's like we're supposed to cook them which i didn't grow up with soft tacos so i didn't know and uh, once i started heating them up in the pan with just a touch of olive oil and sea salt it was just mind-blowing huh yeah i didn't know you're supposed to cook them yeah yeah they taste way better otherwise they taste kind of like a weird cardboard but um, so so heat them up a bit, and they're on just until those bubbles start to turn brown, and they're pretty decent. And most Mexican seasoning, the most important ingredients are chili powder and cumin. If you have those two, you basically got a Mexican seasoning, and you could add salt, pepper, garlic, whatever. Yeah. So so I'll do that. There's uh you know there's tons of good recipes in that lifetime one, like the turkey meatloaf muffins, which is really really good. And you're gonna use ground flax seed as the binder instead of you know breadcrumbs or something like that. So it's it's approved. Um, in almond flour, that's the other binder in that. Hmm. We shouldn't be doing this near lunchtime. <laughs> But there's tons of other things you can do as long as you're sticking within the approved food groups. Uh, I love zucchini noodles. I do lots of things with zucchini noodles to replace pasta. You can make a pretty decent Alfredo sauce if you uh, blend up cooked cauliflower with coconut milk. Yeah, this just sounds like a delicious way to eat for a couple of weeks. Like yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't feel deprived. And actually, like eighty percent of the time, not doing the detox, it's what I eat. So it's not like you're starving on this thing. It's it's really good stuff. Now, let's talk a little bit about lifestyle and exercise changes. So as the detox is, is coming in that week prep, remember one week before you want to slowly get your body ready. You want to start hydrating more. Always a good idea. If you have access to a sauna, you know, sauna is great. Even better if it's an infrared sauna, which most health clubs won't have an infrared one. But if you do have access to that, that's a better wavelength for better detoxification effect. So it helps, uh, you know, once you're starting to convert those toxins into something water soluble, the sauna helps to expel it through sweat and things get right. it out of your skin. Explain that to me. So as you're going through the detox process and you're starting to wean, wean yourself off of these things that are getting into your bloodstream where they shouldn't be, yeah. then, then because they're because you've made them water soluble because you're starting to detox, now you can kind of sweat them out. So it's like 
Speeding up the process? Is that what you're saying? We're not necessarily speeding in the process. So if you just release the toxins and just made them water soluble, but you don't excrete them, that's actually worse <laughs> almost for you. So now you. you're just floating around like you've inoculated yourself with like the flu and you feel like crap after a shot kind of stuff? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. that's ex- a great, great explanation. In fact, uh, there is something called the detox flu. Uh, many people may experience, especially the first week, flu-like symptoms mm. uh, as this process is happening. Part of it is sugar and caffeine withdrawal. That's probably the worst. I remember getting some pretty massive headaches. I would actually have to stop consults and step out and, and get something to eat or something to try and calm down that mm-hmm. that headache, which is why you really want to do that ramp down week. I used to skip that and I paid for it big time. So if you're a big coffee drinker, you may even want to give yourself two weeks to come off of that before you start the full detox. Make sure you're hydrating more. That helps with all that. Remember to move more. Now, the intensity of exercise should actually drop. It should go down. But we do want to get lots of steps in because of the lymphatic drainage system, which is part of our detoxification system. It doesn't have a pump like your heart is your pump for your cardiovascular system. So if you don't move, that lymph fluid will not move. So just getting movement in, that snacks program uh, David Allen talked about in episode five, just any kind of movement will help with that. And so when you're starting to feel crappy, a couple of things you can do is try to hit that sauna if you have it, or just move around a little bit more and it should start to, at least you're doing something to contribute to taking away the symptoms, huh? Yeah, it can help. Um, Now when you say exercise less, it's not really trying to exercise to the point of sweat. This is a different thing. Are you trying to sweat stuff out or is it just to... No, I mean, my my focus on exercise is rarely to sweat. You know, I always have a focused goal in mind. Uh, you know, well, you I'm, suck at that because I work out with you and I sweat like a <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sweat is a byproduct, but it's it's not the goal. So with it, you know, with your strength training program, your intensity during a detox typically it's best to pull back. So you could you can exercise just as long if you want, but you know, I wouldn't be doing super super high intensity workouts. I would back off. I would be doing more yoga because your body's going to be stressed out enough as it's fighting through some of this detox stuff. So I usually pull back my intensity. You know, the HIT class I teach, they even know, you know, I, I stop some of my own workouts and I wouldn't participate as much with the class during that week. But I'll still work core. I'll still do yoga. I'll still do strength training, but I'm not going to do super intense sets and, and try and go to failure on every set. You know, I'll go to fatigue instead and I'll, I'll pare down the volume of training. Mm-hmm. Now, other things to consider is environmental toxins. So this is going to be your cleaning products, your soaps, your detergents, your aerosol sprays, all these different things. There's actually a term for some of the chemicals in those that cause weight loss. They call them obesogens. Um, (laughs) So at least for the detox period, I would experiment with some of the seventh generation brand. They have less of the dyes, less of the added perfumes and chemicals. Mm. And that's probably a harder step for most people. There's all kind. You could Google search online how to make your own detergents and soaps and lotions. I'm too lazy for that. I'm just going to go to Whole Foods and buy it. But, and also in that Lifetime Detox Guide, there's quite a bit in there as well. And they give you some recipes for that. But you do want to consider that. Yeah. Do you find that going through the detox that you want to sleep more? Oh, yeah. I've been exhausted. <laughs> I've been absolutely exhausted. Towards you know the last couple of days, energy's back up again. And um, now one of the benefits, kind of going by caffeine, we kind of build a tolerance to caffeine to where it no longer has an effect. And doing the detox will allow you to get more of a jump start from it when you come back to it with less amount. So that's, so that's a good benefit too. But yeah, definitely um, a little bit more fatigue and tiredness. In fact, we don't recommend people to start a detox if they know there's a really big work project coming up or something stressful going on during that detox, like a wedding or something yeah. like that. That's not the time to detox because you're going to become really irritable. It's just funny because that's when like the Kelly Kapoor crash diets always happen. Like it's pre-wedding, it's pre-big <laughs> event. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's not the ideal to do it, time to do it. Now, I I should have followed that advice. I had a big state exam that I studied for during the detox. And, oh, my God, I needed coffee. So I was, like, sucking down green tea every 20 minutes. You know, I get, like, a five-minute buzz, and then I'm, like, dying again. So super stressful periods of your life is a poor time to start a detox. Doesn't yeah. mean you can't do it. I just don't recommend it. Right. So the holidays are out for most Americans. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you notice, I timed mine right so that I could jump back into real food on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I don't so. miss Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so beginning of November is a great time to do it. It's just before the holidays. So do you find that you're trying to schedule more time for sleep when you're doing a detox? 
I'm taking more naps yeah. um, if your schedule allows for it. I know not everybody has that luxury. Well, with what we learned from how productive the American worker is, <laughs> <laughs> two hours. Of, you can find a spot to just lay down. You might as well take a nap because you're not doing any work. <laughs> yeah. Well, while you're talking about that, there's a couple great mental techniques to get a quick five minute refresher in. If you can't take a full nap, but you can go to your car at work for on your lunch break. The easiest, quickest one is four, seven, eight breathing. Some people call it box breathing. I don't get it because a box has four sides and that's only three numbers. That drives me nuts. Why is it called box breathing? But you breathe in for four counts, you hold it for seven counts, and you breathe out for eight counts, and you repeat that process. That resets your nervous system. It helps with relaxation and oxygenation to the bloodstream. Now, if you kind of want to get a um, more of a meditative snooze, Dr. Daniel Amen has in his book, Fix Your Brain, Fix Your Life, this exercise I use almost every day of my life where you slowly let your eyelids fall, counting backwards from 20 to 1 until they're closed. Then you squeeze your eyes really, really tight and then relax them. Eyelids are still closed. Then you're going to count backwards from 20 to 1 again. And when you get to 1, you're going to take three really deep breaths, filling up your whole body and relaxing your muscles. After that, you're then going to pretend you're going down an escalator and count backwards from 20 to one. And when you get to one, you're at the bottom of the escalator. You're envisioning this in your brain and you're going to be at the most relaxing copacetic setting you can think of. For me, it's the men's lounge uh, where you're waiting for a massage at the Emstead Hotel. Uh, there's like a fireplace and a chair and men's health magazines and stuff like that. You know, one of my clients, hers is the Beauty and the Beast library. Um, Dr. Daniel Amen actually recommends a snowy cabin in the woods with a fireplace, hot cocoa, you know, with, you know, monk fruit and stevia, not the cane sugar kind. And uh, <laughs> Hey, man, it's my, it's my dream, it's all right? It's your dream. <laughs> it's a bourbon. So, Joe, Joe, what would your <laughs> ideal place be? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, the, the log cabin in the woods sounds nice. I'm not a super outdoorsy guy, but I sure do like to vacation in luxury near the outdoors. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I had one person say the Golden Corral buffet. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if we're going in the right direction here. So anyway, you, you spend some mental time as long as you want. And if um, you can't fall asleep because you have work, you count 20 to 1 again, you come up the escalator and you open your eyes. Or if you want to go to bed for the night, you start counting to 1,000 and very few people make it past 300. So in short, you're going to count backwards 20 to 1, allowing your eyelids to close. Squeeze your eyes, relax, count backwards 20 to 1 again going to take some deep breaths and then you're going to go down that escalator for 20 seconds, spend some time in your happy place and you'll either come up or start counting to a thousand to go to sleep. It's like a work nap. Yeah, exactly. So Sounds I, like a guided meditation. Yeah. Is there an app for it? Uh, you're going down the escalator. We can make it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we should. We need to get with Dr. Daniel Amen. But it's a great exercise to do if you're in the sauna during the detox and you just hate heat and you're super uncomfortable with that. You can practice that exercise there. But trying to take more time to relax and reset some of those stress hormones, that could be part of your detox as well, which is why I decided to go into that. I looked it up. Box breathing is called box breathing because it focuses on the four corners of your breath. The inhale, the breath hold, the exhale, and the breath hold. Now, I'm not I'm not very smart, but I think that's three. That's three, yeah. <laughs> that's breath hold twice. <laughs> Pulling the wool over her eyes. Yeah, I'm gonna call it triangle breathing. Fight me. <laughs> Change my mind. <laughs> yeah, good thing I'm not in charge of naming stuff. <laughs> Who named the platypus? I think it's Adam. <laughs> All right, guys. So once you've cleared all the junk from your body for a good two weeks, we want to not do a retox where you just add everything back in all at once. Then you lose most of the benefit of the detox. Now what we want to do is use this clear, clean slate opportunity to figure out what does your body respond poorly to and what, what is it okay with. So you're going to take one item at a time. And you're going to have that item for three days and you're going to notate any symptom changes. So, for instance, if you cut out eggs, start with eggs. Some people will notice, hey, skin issues come up. Or, hey, my stomach isn't feeling all that hot. Well, then we know you probably have a mild sensitivity to eggs. It doesn't mean you're never going to eat them again. It just means you may not want it to be a staple anymore. Caffeine's going to be my first one. I'm putting coffee back in instantly. <laughs> but if I notice, hey, my sleep's interrupted, I'm jittery and not feeling great, then I may scale it back. 
but do it for three days, then you move on to the next group. You know, and then, then, hey, if you want to put corn in, be my guest. I mean, I recommend not to, but if traditionally you've never had any issues and you're pretty happy with your health and you want to yeah. introduce it. Yeah, when you were describing this to me the first time, I thought this is the way to save money because I am I can be cheap yeah. and uh, I don't really want to pay for the test and the blood work and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can help. Now, now blood work's probably going to be more definitive. And if you have more severe issues, I would definitely recommend the blood work. But if you're just trying to get a little bit healthier and do a reset, this is a great way to find out what foods your body's not crazy about. Yeah. There's all kinds of symptom trackers you could download. You know, again, if you want a complete kit, the, the Lifetime one has that included as well. And just because it's their proprietary stuff, I don't want to just list everything in there. But achy joints, things like that, any bowel issues, and any skin issues are typically the things that that will pop up first. How long does the sense of clarity that you described earlier tend to last? As long as you eat that way. As you start to reintroduce more junk and then go back to your old habits, then it can start to become an issue. But hopefully you'll learn enough about your body during the reintroduction period that there's some sustainable change happening. Now, the skin issues are typically the most prevalent. Uh, I always get those bubbles immediately after wheat grain and corn. Always. Like within, within 48 hours, they appear. Sometimes even if I'm just sampling stuff at Harris Teeter. <laughs> Which is why I shop there. I love samples. I am all about samples. <laughs> Trader Joe's gives you like one yummy sample, but that's it. They just got the <laughs> one place at the end of the store. And it's usually awesome. Some kind of weird, delicious, yeah, tiny cup. or something. But then that's it. <laughs> it's my happy place. Free samples. Have you guys ever played Cards Against Humanity? Yeah, um, I played it. So one of the cards is free samples. And I think the question that was thrown is what do you think about during sex? And somebody <laughs> threw free samples and I lost it. Um, the other two, there was another one that was the true meaning of Christmas or something. I don't know. It was hilarious. So but. I played that game once and the first time I played it, my parents were in town. So we ended up playing Cards Against Humanity with my mom and dad. <laughs> That's not awkward. And uh, the cards are filthy. <laughs> They're pretty bad. And yeah. what I learned right quick, because I like to win, is that dad would pick the filthiest one. <laughs> <laughs> Which was so surprising based on his character. Oh. But when everyone was like the filthiest, he thought it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were playing What the Meme the other day with uh, with Michelle's parents. And it was kind of a similar <laughs> We had a lot of fun. All right. So once you've gotten through the reintroduction period, you le you've learned some cool stuff about your body. Uh, now we want to put this into practice. So if you did respond to some of those items like eggs or if it's interrupting your sleep, just be strategic. You know, you can do like a four-day rotation or um, save it for special occasions. But things you could do to mitigate the damage of those is uh, you can add more scoops of like L-glutamine, which is a supplement that heals the lining of the small intestines. So you could double up on that. That can help mitigate it. Oh, now while I'm thinking about it, sometimes when people do the detox, they'll have some kind of medical thing come up and they're like, oh man, now I have to take ibuprofen, which happened to me. So I had a really bad infected ingrown toenail and uh, woke me up at two in the morning, just pounding. And I'm like, gosh, I just started the detox. So I did end up taking a couple ibuprofen, which I almost never do because it ruins the lining of your small intestines. Now, when you take those types, you want to take the minimal dose to get you by, and you don't want to do it for more than two or three days. Many people chronically do them just for aches and pains every day. That's a mistake. Uh, but I did end up doing it for a day, and it would be easy to go, well, I screwed up the detox and I quit. No, I would, I would continue. I would finish it out. You're still going to get a ton of benefit. And had you not been on the detox, in addition to those ibuprofen, you would have been doing wheat, grain, corn, soy, dairy, alcohol, and all this other nonsense. So if something like that pops up or you go, oh man, I, I accidentally had this sample and it had soy in it. Don't just give up. Uh, still fight it through because you're still eating 98% better than you normally do. And you're giving your body two weeks to do that. So just to kind of recap, because there's, I think, like you've done this a bunch of times. For me, this is the first time I'm hearing it. There's just a lot of details. So I could benefit from the old repeating thing. So on the recap list here, the things to avoid, the naughty list were... Wheat, grain, corn, soy, dairy, alcohol, added sugar, peanuts, grapefruit, and then artificial sweeteners too, like sucralose. Now, what's what I haven't mentioned a lot because I nailed it in so many other episodes and didn't want to uh, beat a dead horse is vegetable oils like canola oil, soybean oil. We want to avoid those as well. And then while you're on the fast, you should be hydrating more than normal. Yep. If you have access to it, use a sauna to continue to sweat out 
the toxins that you've worked so hard to get to the surface or make water, water soluble. That's correct. Maybe set a sleep routine, set a time for bed, because you need to be aware you're going to be sleepier. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're going to be a little bit more fatigued. And then consider trying to minimize uh, the environmental toxins. Right, so your cleaning products, your makeups, you know, uh, look at your soaps. We're looking for th- phthalates, parabens, things like that. So now that you've done the detox, you've got this added clarity, these added health benefits, you've done the work. What can people expect to feel feel like after going through the effort? Oh, I think there'll be a lot less inflammation. You know, we talked about the puffiness going down. Usually gut motility is better. And they're not having as many issues. I think that they could expect a lot more energy for sure. Yeah. Or, or at least more steady energy, better focus, better clarity. So it's a, it's a long-term thing. So how often do you recommend this and how often do you do it? So it's recommended to do two to four times a year. Personally, I typically only do it twice. You know, I'd love to do it every quarter, but... Uh, I have to imagine it would be, how how bad do you violate the principles of toxing up your body <laughs> to determine how often you'd have to do it? Yeah, yeah. I really need to do it this time. Uh, you know, at card night, I was adding more and more shots. So, <laughs> so it, was, it was time to pull back. So yeah, if you just get to a point in your life and you go, hey, I'm having a really hard time saying no to all these cheats and I've been doing more and more lately, that's a great time to do it. I think that's a good reason to do it. You know, if you're feeling just flawless and perfect and don't feel you need to do it, you might already be eating that way. But but I would try it at least twice a year. Yeah. And so the compound effect of doing this onto your microbiome system and your liver, this is not like a quick fix thing. And that's kind of like the whole tone of the show, right, is that there's no shortcuts. Right. But you should be doing this for your long-term health, for optimal health in your life. And not just to feel better for a couple of weeks or gain mental clarity, but just for the long term. Right, right. It's teaching you how you should eat. I truly believe this is how we should eat for best hormonal balance and things like that. And everybody will differ a little bit. All right, guys. So I hope you learned uh, a lot uh, on a proper detox. We'll link uh, the Lifetime Fitness Detox in the show notes. There's probably some other good ones out there as well. But I hope you seriously consider doing it. And if it's just too scary for you to cut all those things, you know, just make sure you're eliminating one item a week and being more mindful of that, looking at your labels and things like that. Because what we're ultimately after is a sustainable way to eat. This could be a sustainable way to eat for a lot of people, but it is difficult. So see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's episode. If you did, uh, go check us out at firewithinnf.com. You can subscribe to our newsletters and make sure you never miss an episode or any other content. Also be sure to follow us on social media. 